Welcome to Raid Guides in a Trench Coat featuring the End Singer, Clinical Depression. The same end. Again and 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 again Endsinger is a fight told in heads, planets, rings, and gas station sushi vomit. The best metaphor I've found for explaining the mechanics is, unironically, counting the number of relevant heads in the attack. To this end, I'm going to start by explaining what all six of those head mechanics are, and then we'll finish up with a rough fight timeline. One Head One head is characterized by one central head in the middle of the arena. It is also characterized by a bunch of orange and blue planets that are on collision, the orange planets deal a bunch of AoE damage, and the blue planets do an arena-wide knockback, position yourself accordingly. On top of that, the head part of this mechanic will be facing in some direction and will cleave that half of the room, which is a lot easier to visualize when avoiding the orange planets rather than when you're trying to triangulate what non-Euclidean purgatory of geometry the blue planets are going to launch you through. Two Head Two Head is taking the tank's two heads and their combined 14 brain cells and backhanding them both into oblivion at the same time. They're just big tank busters, don't get hit unless you're supposed to. How's that for hubris? Three Head Three Head is a memory murder mystery where the victim is you and the murder weapon is a flare taken at point blank range because we can't all have donuts. I only bought half a dozen and Little Miss three bacon strips short of being vegetarian already ate half of them. That leaves three, not five. Everyone gathers around and looks above their head where they'll have one of four things. A stack marker, a donut marker, a flare marker, or everyone will have a spread marker. The spread marker round is easy, everyone just goes to their clocks. Flares also go to the clocks, and both the other ones stay dead center. Then, the fun part. After three rounds of this, you're going to get a number of piss rings around yourself, perhaps a whole shower of them. For each ring you have, you have to think back one mechanic and remember what you did. One ring means do what you just did, not do the first mechanic you did. Sometimes they're the same and it doesn't matter, so you get a false sense of justification and then terrorize Partyfinder for a few hours insisting that you're right. I'm not looking at anyone on my blacklist in particular. When in doubt, Hello World's Goodbye World strat also works here. Forehead. Okay, I debated doing this one last because it's technically the exception to the rule. There are not four heads in this mechanic, just a forehead. A really big forehead. Ensinger is going to careless whisper all over your ears as she either vomits up gas station sushi or cries about how much her tummy hurts from all the gas station sushi. The first time this mechanic goes off, everyone is going to be bound by chains! Sin is going to need to cluster up in the middle so that by the time they actually tether to someone and you run away, enough distance will be created so that the chain actually breaks. For centuries we have been bound by them! There's also these red meteor things that you have to stand on the right half of. Unless you're on the east side of the arena, and then you'd have to stand on the left side. Unless she's vomiting, and then you'd have to stand on the right side. Unless, of course, you're in the west. And Five hit. After a veritable buffet of gas station sushi, all of the heads are going to have massively upset stomachs and are going to make it your problem. You know, this sushi joke was a lot funnier in my head before almost every mechanic utilized it in some way. What is this shit actually? Dynamis? The state of savage rating on Dynamis? Do we know? The head at the center faces two other heads which are both going to be unsafe. And then, of the two remaining heads, only one of them is going to be a starchy donut of stomach settling safety. Wait in this donut for everything to explode, and then rotate clockwise. Then, the heads will explode again, rotate, and then they explode a third time. This part I'll actually explain in a bit of depth because I have an opinion, I'm right, and this video is nowhere close to 10 minutes yet. Now, all of the heads are going to get some piss rings, and if you thought people struggled to figure out the rings for their own personal characters, re three head, then oh boy it's time to ruin your whole last day. Imagine, if you will, that the heads are paired off into diagonals, so the northwest and southeast heads are one pair, and the northeast and southwest heads are the other. 
Whichever head you end on after the initial attacks is along your odd diagonal, which means that if that head or its corresponding diagonal partner has an even number of rings, then it will be 100% unsafe for the resolution of this mechanic. Vice versa, the heads on the opposite diagonal are only potentially safe if they have an even number of rings. Further, you now have to solve for the center head. One ring means it's cleaving the direction which is presently facing, and then each additional ring is a counterclockwise movement that it will make. When all is said and done, there should only be one head that is both safe from itself and safe from the center, and odds are, most of your team is already running towards it. Six Head The correct way to solve Six Head is to emulate your younger brother playing Guitar Hero after you just successfully pushed 90% on Through the Fire and the Flames. You may have crushed it, but now you have to suffer through watching him actively miss every single note because they are coming too fast for him to see, even though he's playing on easy and there are only three buttons for him to hit. Emulate that. Except, I guess, it's a bit more like medium because there are going to be four notes flying off towards four different heads, starting with three on one half of the arena and only one on the opposite side. The safe spot is suffocating yourself and the hair of any head not about to get hit by a note. Then, each head that was hit is going to cast out another note in some MC Escher bullshit pattern where you're only going to see which of the new heads is safe as you get hit. Alright, so those are the mechanics, and at this point, the smudge post-it note hanging off my monitor that has the fight timeline reads as follows. 1 head, 4 head, 2 head, 1 head, 4 head, 5 head, 4 head, 2 head, 3 head, 6 head, 4 head, 2 head, 1 head, which is really just two 1 heads in a row, 4 head, 5 head, 4 head, 2 head, 6 head, 4 head, 1 head, and then finally, if you haven't managed to do enough damage, big purple ball of enrage. And congrats, that's Ensinger. You just beat up a child whose only goal in life was to be happy until it found out about taxes and people who buy used underwear on the internet. Go watch a real guide.